Hello everybody, Drew here, tip of the mint flips, where I'm a stay-at-home dad and a part-time eBay reseller. And every 100 subscribers is a giveaway. So if you're watching, make sure you subscribe so you have a chance to win. Very close to the next subscriber giveaway, I think like five more subs. So there is a high likelihood that that giveaway will end up in this video. Who knows? You will. That's who will know. You will know. Another great sales weekend in dollars and volume of items. Something like 38 items. That's a ton. That might be a record for me. I don't really know. And it was from Friday evening till Monday morning. So, you know, over a weekend that's kind of extended or whatever. But it's just, it's a lot and I'm happy about it. Also 10 TCG player orders. So things are going great. I did notice that the store was getting... I don't know, just felt a little stagnant. What it was is I wasn't getting a lot of opportunities to send offers to watchers, send offers to potential buyers, that kind of thing. So what I did, this is the key with end and sell similar, okay? Cause that's what I did. I bumped my store up when I got the boat parts cause I needed the extra listings. And so I have 10,000 li listings available and I only have 14 to 1500 items listed at a time, not including multi-quantity, but that doesn't count towards your listing. So I don't know why I mentioned it. So I just, instead of picking through items, I just ended and sold similar my whole store, 200 items at a time. It only took 15 minutes or something. And that's only because I'm very cautious about it. Double check, make sure I relist it and delete and all that kind of stuff. Ending and selling similar does not guarantee you more sales, but what it does do is guarantee you more traffic to your store and more ability to send out offers. Those two things tend to, can, possibly, mayhaps lead to sales. Is there a direct correlation? I think yes. Is that something I can prove? Yeah, not really. But I think it works. I don't do it. I used to do it all the time. I wouldn't let an item go over 30 days. I would just end and sell similar, but I don't need to do that right now. So I don't like to do work that doesn't need to be done because then my time can be better spent doing other things like listing more items. If you do feel your store is getting stagnant, especially you're not seeing a lot of chances to send out offers at a rate that you normally do, end and sell similar will bump that up. I'm not saying that will get you more sales, but it will, will give you a chance to send more offers and it will put more eyes on your items. If you do it and that doesn't help your sales, I would check what you're selling, check your pricing, see if you are doing something wrong. I went ahead and pulled all the dingles and dongles and who's he what's it ahead of time to get those packed up and then I'm gonna eat some lunch and then film the rest of the of this poll video. And that's what this is gonna be if you don't know yet. What sold over this week this will be, you know, multi-day what sold video. I think those are going all right. And then at the end of it, I will total up the boat part profits for the week and the grand total, which right now they're sitting at $7,086.31 in profits, not including these. So it's going so good. All right, before I start pulling the rest of the orders, um, I did have a request from someone who purchased a boat part and they said, hey, if I pay full price, would you upgrade this to priority shipping? The difference after I packed it up and everything, and I used my own packaging, which you don't have to, I could have used, nothing would have been great for this because everything would have been too heavy. Any kind of box would have been too heavy. It bumped it up too much. But it only ended up being with my eBay discount, actually with my pirate ship discount, which is comparable, usually exactly the same as eBay, which if you don't know, <laughs> a lot of tips here. Pirate ship is a discount shipping service and the prices are very comparable to eBay, but... With Pirate Ship, I can use my cash back rewards credit card, and therefore it makes more sense because over last year I saved almost $300 by using my cash back rewards card, or at least I, I would have. I calculated, but I didn't start till a few months into the year. And this year I anticipate that being much more, closer to the $600 mark. So that's a lot of money. If you save money, therefore you make more money. One of the best ways to make more money is to save money. But they requested I bump it up to priority. Couple things. One, they live in Chicago. I live in the tip of Michigan, tip of the lower peninsula. If I would have sent it ground advantage, it would have made it in the same amount of time. There's not gonna be any difference in the shipping time, but I didn't care. The extra $3 or whatever it was I paid in shipping was worth the sale. But when you do ship things in non-priority packaging, make sure you throw a priority sticker on it. They're free. You can get them at your post office. You can get them at USPS.com. To circumvent the 
carrier or the person at the post office seeing not priority and putting it in the wrong basket or it not getting the extra attention it should by upcharging to priority. So just throw one of those stickers on there. If it's a box, throw it on every side. I, again, one of those things, I have no proof that that has helped, but when it's free and almost effortless, why wouldn't you? I think it's a good idea. Also, just a weird story, not really weird, but an interesting story. I don't know, I got a story. <laughs> I had somebody reach out on one of the boat parts and they said, hey, does this include the seal and the something or other? And I said, not being rude, but just my message is I keep them to the point. I ain't got time to be cordial in a correspondence for sales. It's just you ask for a question. Here's the information. And I said, all of the items in pictured, all the items included are pictured in the listing. That's not being rude. That's just use your eyeballs. Look at the listing. You decide if those things you're asking about are in the listing. Then they came back and basically said I was being rude and something or other. I don't remember their exact wording, but basically they were getting to the point that I was being rude. And I clarified. I said, I am neither a boat person or a mechanic or a supplier of these parts. I am just a reseller. I don't even know what these things you're asking for are. I do not have the information you want. I can send you more pictures if you'd like, if that's helpful, blah, blah, blah. So then they go and look at the pictures and tell me, yeah, I think it has all the things that I mentioned. Okay, so you could have done that with the first message I sent you and not been turdly about it. Um, but then they sent me, like, it was like a $240 part. They sent me an offer of like, or they didn't even send me an offer. They said, hey, I'll do 175 free shipping and it's a heavier item. It weighs a couple pounds. And I said, no, I don't do free shipping and I'll do $200, $200 plus shipping. And then they said something like, oh, well, I'll find it else somewhere else. I'll, I'll get it somewhere else. No, you won't. No, you won't. And you won't get it cheaper because mine is the cheapest one listed. And I think with that part, mine was also the only one available. So you're not going to go to a supplier and get it. You're not going to go to a local store and get it. Mine was your best option. And now you've been rude and... I thought about blocking them for when they inevitably come back and have to buy it, but I just won't give them the discount and they'll have to pay the $240. So there, take that. And I also ended the message the way I always like to, which I know is passive aggressive, but I, it brings me joy and you have to find joy in things. I always, when someone's being rude, when I end the message conversation, I say, have a blessed day. It makes me feel good because if they're being mean on their end, it might make them feel bad about it. Like I said, I know it's totally passive aggressive, but I find joy in it. So it is what it is. Let's go and pull some orders. First thing going out. Well, not first thing, but first thing I'm pulling in E. Oh, that confused me for a second because that's a bucket over here. It's a pair of shoes, a pair of Echo shoes, and they are buried. So give me a second. Yeah, this box down here, it's all closed. It's one of those locations that I forget I use because I never go in there and I don't sell a lot of clothes. Uh, but it was this pair of shoes right here. I paid $3 for those. I got $29.99 plus shipping. So that's pretty good. Something to just look out for, just a tip, because wrapping paper for some reason is extraordinarily expensive and they give you less of it. Thank you, shrinkflation. When Christmas ends, they do sell non-Christmas wrapping paper. So think about it. Pick up some, you know, for the birthdays the rest of the year. Th the reason I mention it, Thea's birthday is in a couple weeks. And now I have Encanto wrapping paper for Way to Go Dad. She asked to have an Encanto themed birthday party. Nailed it. She's going to be four. It's going to be fun. I hope. I hope. Next up, B3i is some vintage play mobile. It's like a hat they're like a, a bison helmet two of those right there for the pair nine dollars free shipping those i think came in the big barbie and book buy but i'm not positive on that next up d3 is 2001 skeletor hey i'll get you he man i think it's a pretty good skeletor impersonation for that right there i don't know where i got that cost of goods less than a dollar for sure 878 free shipping. It was of course on sale. Not a ton of money, but when you're selling next to free trinkets and dongles and toys and stuff, what am I going to get there? Probably four dollars in profit, three something in profit. What more could I ask for? I would say that is better than this next one. C6. It is a vintage Tommy Hilfiger backpack, which if this was in 
a little better condition, I would have probably, you know, got another $5 for it, but it had some dainage of some kind, just a little, little dinge. I did clean it pretty well. I paid $3 for it and I got $14 plus shipping. You know, I'm making $10 here. I'm making $4 here. Would I rather sell two of these than have to deal with one of these? Probably. Next up, it's a book. Centaur Isle Piers. Oh, Centaur Isle by Pierce Anthony. This one here. I got this in a big nerd lot of books. This one was not one of the better ones, but that whole lot worked out pretty well. 683 free shipping. That'll of course go media mail. Next up, B1A is a Tupperware lid. It is this one right here. And I like the lids better than I like the Tupperware in most cases. And this one right here, 719 free shipping. I probably got this for free or very close to free. And I will make about $3 on that, which today is full of and this last weekend happened as well, full of a lot of very cheap items. But if 10 to 20 of the items I sold today, I'm making $5 profit on, would I rather have that extra $50 or would I not? If I had better stuff to list, the answer is no. If you don't have better stuff to list, the answer is of course, yes. Next up, D4 is a rubber stampede strawberry stamps. Right here, rubber stampede strawberry stamps, pair of two of those. No clue what I paid, I think from a free box, but that'd be a total guess. $10 free shipping. And a lot of the items, of course, they're right now on a, because after I did the end and sell similar, I backed off my sale percentage and it's back to 20%. It got all the way up to 26 or 27%. My intention was not to, when I listed these things, sell them for this cheap prices. It's just eventually the market dictates that or time in the store dictates that, or just a bad purchase dictates that. Either way, sometimes it's time to go. Next up, it's a book. It's Walt Disney Wonderful World of Reading, The Magic Grinder. Right down here, The Magic Grinder. And I think it's a music box type of grinder, not like a spice grinder. And that one right there, $8.79 free shipping. That came in the big Barbie and book buy. Next up, B3J2. This one, ooh, I got lucky. It's just kind of sticking out there. But that, that one's a pain to go through. There's too many items in there, not very organized. But these little, uh, I think those are cardinals maybe? I'll check the listing, but cute little earrings. Barlow signed gold tone red cardinal earrings. And those right there on sale, 1063 free shipping. All the jewelry in um, B3J was free. Whatever profits there are all profits. All right, next up, D3 is a pair of Reebok women's shoes. Not D3, it says D3. All right, it says D3, but it is on the shoe rack. I probably just moved them one day and was like, ah, I'll know that they're there. But these are uh, Simply Tone which I think these are a pretty good seller, these Simply Tones. There's another one from, are they Shape It Ups, I think? There's something like that where it's supposed to like help you, I don't know, get better legs or something while you walk. Who knows if that works? You know what else works? The walking. <laughs> Um, before those, no clue where I got them. That looks like it's probably like a, a Goodwill purchase, so probably five bucks. $19.99 plus shipping. And one of the things that I will still buy stuff at the thrift stores, specifically shoes at Goodwill and whatever I randomly come across at Salvation Army, is because then I have receipts and then there's a tax write-off. So some of those items... I'm not going to make as much money on something like this that I would if I got it at a garage sale or um, in a Mikhail mystery box or something like that or in a big lot of stuff. But it does. And yes, you can write off the stuff at the garage sale, but it's just nice to have more receipts. My tax professional enjoys if I have some amount of receipts to kind of bolster my whole tax thing because my taxes are a nightmare. They're a nightmare because I run my own business. I make money from eBay, YouTube, affiliate links. I trade crypto and stocks. I make music that I get residuals off of from years ago. There's just so many things where I get money from and so many things I have to track. It's, it's really, it's a nightmare. And uh, actually tomorrow I do go and finish my taxes. I prepped them already. Hello, Blackbeard. Hello. Say hello. I, it's a good way to have some more receipts. Whether you find that necessary or not, I think it's a good idea. And I'm going to go ahead and pack these up just because the desk is kind of crowded right now, which I need to 
clean this whole place. I've been saying that for two months. But now I have the time because the boat parts are done. Pack these up and then I'll pull some more orders. All right, got all that packed up. Next up, I got another Jewel Pop order from one of my favorite buyers because she has bought, I mean, at this point, it's because one, two, three, four, five, six of them in this order. It's over 30. It, I don't want to, I don't think 50, 50 is probably pushing it, but it's over 30 of them that she's bought. And I just, I love her so much. She actually, there's no way that the one person I know who lives in the town she lives in knows her. But I just, at some point I have to reach out and say, hey, do you happen to know this person? Cause that would be so cool if I could connect with them in a way, I don't know. Would that be weird? Probably. But if they know each other, I guess wouldn't be that weird. I could say, hey, Frankie, do you know this person? She'd be like, oh yeah, we play bridge together. What are the chances? Probably pretty slim. She got this one for 30, 39 free shipping. And then all of these, uh, the two, and again, I can never get good shots of these, but these two here, this one here, this cool looking one here, which they are all silver. If there's enamel, they're enamel, of course. And then the crystals are all Swarovski crystals. Um, and then this, this one's really cool. For this one was 30, 39, and then one, two, three. For this lot of five, 148, 75. And because they are free shippers, and I'm combining shipping, I am saving money, therefore making more money, more money, more money. <laughs> and then next up, D1 is a CPAP machine bag. Tucked back here, ResMed CPAP machine bag. This I got for free at a garage sale. I got five dollars plus shipping the shipping is out of control eleven dollars and sixty cents but it's because of the size of it so i'll make a couple bucks on that but it was free so any amount of money i make is profit next up b3a is a pair of belt buckles i think they're centennial belt buckles right back here uh this one is american revolution centennial and the other one is Spirit of America Centennial Belt Buckle. And for the pair of those, $11.99 free shipping. No clue where I got those. Next up, C5B7 is a Kemper doll wig. C5B7. Oh, can't be that one. Oh, see this one labeled C5B. I would check the one labeled C5B, Drew. Maybe that's where it's at. Seven. And for this Kemper doll wig, $10 free shipping. Cost of goods, way less than a dollar. Next up, C2 is a lot of books. It is uh, books by Terry Goodkind. And I can't believe this lot of briar horses hadn't sold. I gotta go check the pricing on that. But it has been on a 25% off sale. So it was at one point, I think a $60 lot of horses. So 25% off that seems like a steal to me, but who knows? We're not talking about that. We're talking about these books. I got all of these and a whole bunch other from this Tor Fantasy Publishing, Del Rey, and then a ton of James Patterson. I think I got them for less than 25 cents a book, but a lot of them were I was just taking a shot in the dark. I was just trying to build out sets. Almost none of them were complete sets. I really wanted the James Patterson. The rest of them were me kind of branching out into other sets, which the upside is I found a book in that set that I randomly was like, I'm gonna try reading this one. Fell in love with it. I'm on the third book of the series. I don't find much time to read, but it's real good. For that lot right there, $11.99 free shipping. This will go media mail, but I'm gonna make like, I don't know, $2 or something. It's it's not good. Next up, B3A is a set of Anita Forks. B3A, oh, I was just in there. I need a Forks. No, O need a Forks. I guess with all that silverware in there, I should probably check how many and what the pattern looks like. And here, this will be tip of the day. And the tip of the day is when you list a lot of similar items, do not put them together. Don't fill a drawer with them. Don't do it. And if you do, then put them in like Ziploc bags or something and label the bags or else you will have to do this and waste time. And time is money. It's the set I picked up first. One, two, three, four, five, six. Maybe not. <laughs> I should have just trusted my instincts. That's never led me astray. For that lot right there, $13 free shipping. I would have paid next to nothing for those. And silverware has, has gone well. I 
tested it out b buying and diving into silverware last summer it went well enough that i will be targeting silverware again next up it's a book american gorilla in the philippines and i almost kept this one to read because it just seemed like a type of book i would like it just it sounds like it's about guerrilla war warfare in the philippines i do like a mix of like warfare fiction you know it doesn't have to be like true story but i do like it to be set in like a war time i do enjoy that for whom the bell tolls one of my all-time favorite books for that one right there six dollars free shipping will go media mail for six hours free shipping probably should just kept it and seen if i liked it next up d3 is a vintage husky crescent wrench this big boy right here oh it's cool it's got uh measurements on it that's useful that should come on every crescent wrench in standard and metric why isn't this on every single crescent wrench that that would be awesome i should have kept this one <laughs> <laughs> just here, here's the day where drew sells things he should have kept for that right there 11.99 free shipping no clue no clue where i got it no clue how much i paid no clue where i got it next up b3b is a vintage pin i think it's a snowmobile pin tucked back here it is the sioux michigan 10th annual i500 from 1978 i think they still do this race if i'm not mistaken that has now because this was in 1978 i think that's the race now where you it's a snowmobile race but you have to use the vintage snowmobiles so it's like an endurance race because there's, there's no like shocks and stuff it's really strenuous um, I got a couple of buddies that do it, and I think that's the race. But either way, $11.99 free shipping for a pin, button, whatever you want to call it. That, I guarantee, was free. Next thing, B3B1 is a lot of, like, Barbie accessory type stuff. Yeah, it's got, uh, like, a little guitar and just all kinds of odds and ends. It looks like a Boy Scout hat, maybe. Just doll accessories that couldn't be identified got lotted together and i got 12 dollars free shipping that was from the big barbie and book buy which the two random cheapo items i sold today paid for one of the boxes from the barbie and book buy that again my dad said i was foolish and overpaid for listen here old man you know a lot about stuff but when it comes to the resale game I'm the man. <laughs> he doesn't watch my videos. Next up, C2. And here is another set of silverware. C2 Orleans floral set. I'm guessing it's this big set right here. Yes, maybe. I will double check, but I'm pretty sure it's the only big set that was on that shelf. For that set of silverware, 33 pieces, $39.99 plus shipping. And I will make some money on the shipping because either A, ground advantage, I will make some money. Worst case scenario, I will put it in a USPS priority flat rate. And then I know it will be whatever that is, $8.50. I think that's before the discount. Not positive on that. I barely use priority anymore. Actually, it was kind of funny. I stopped into my post office and dropped my packages off. They said, hey, we got new not new, but we got a new uh, shipment of number sevens in. And I used to use a lot of number sevens. That's the outside dimension 13, 13, nine. It's the big box. And I said, I will probably never need one again because I have three boxes, three packages of them in my storage. I haven't used one in a month. Ground Advantage has been great. The switch to Ground Advantage, so good. It wasn't great when I tried it the first time because I wasn't prepared with the right boxes once i was prepared with the right boxes and having enough of the right boxes it has been a dream also slowly migrated to things that don't need a box that is also very helpful next up this one this, this one's funny b3k11 is a vintage barbie growing b3 what did i say b3k have i ever gone into this box I think it's a skipper. That's why I kind of paused there. Growing up skipper plaid arithmetic. So it's like a school outfit. $18 free shipping. That one almost pays for the other box from the big Barbie and book buy. Because there was two boxes of like doll stuff. And Barbies, of course. And one box of books. But I don't know why somebody would do this. Maybe they're a viewer. And if you are, I'm very thankful. If they're not as a business person, I just... I'm befuddled. Someone reached out because I just had this listed as like an unmarked Barbie, unmarked doll, something or other, because it had no identification and we couldn't identify what it was. They said, hey, this is the 
blah, 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 9024, plaid arithmetic. I said, okay, thank you, which again, when people say that, don't take it at face value. Go back and do your own research again, because I have had people tell me, and then they were wrong. So don't trust it, but use it. I checked, and they were correct. You know why they were correct? Because they have this item listed. This exact item. So they listed theirs and then reached out to me, which again, if they're a viewer, that I understand because you're trying to be friendly to me. And if you are, thank you. But if not, I don't understand that because then I went and I found it and then I matched price and then I did end up taking an offer. That again, befuddles me. If it was an item I noticed like when I was shopping or something I just was kind of like browsing through, yes. But something that I'm a competitor on, I don't know. And I've had a few boat part sales come in while I've been packing. I don't think I'll get to them today. Cadence will be off the bus in a little bit and she's been gone for four days and I miss her. So I don't think I'm gonna take extra time packing stuff up today. I might not even pack all this up. Most of the stuff on this table doesn't have to be out for another two days. I just like to be ahead of schedule on shipping. Next up, B3E is a Sony bag. I don't know, this was either like a Mikhail mystery box or a free or something. Just very, very little money invested, if any at all. And I took an offer, 650 free shipping. That's about what they were going for. It wasn't like I undercut myself. Just this is the type of item where you list it if you don't have something else to list. Actually, this kind of item, I'll list this in like cords and other items that are accessories to things because while they're listed, maybe they'll sell. And then also while they're listed, maybe I'll find the item that goes with it and then I can check my own store, pull those out, bundle them together. That's also a thought I have, but I've said it many times now. If you have better things, list them. So many people will tell you this, you know, don't cherry pick, don't push stuff to the side, you know, list, 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 list the stuff, you know, so you don't become overwhelmed. No, cherry pick. Pick the very best items you have and list those. The highest sell through rates, the most money, list those. If you end up to start accumulating cheap items that you don't have time to list, then dump them, put them in a garage sale, donate them back, get them out of your way, list your best stuff. Next up, B4 is a pair of Ray pants, R-E-I pants. They look like really cool, like um, high quality, like hiking brand or something like that. Not my size or else I probably would have kept them. They are way too big for me. I think those came in a Mikhail mystery box. So price of goods, less than a dollar. And I got 21, 27 free shipping, which was on sale. And then that catches us up to the stuff that sold today. So I will go ahead and pack that stuff up and either you'll see me future Drew or maybe sooner future Drew. Future Drew here, it is my midweek shipping day. It is so cold and I forgot to turn the heat on. So I am shaking, so I hope you can't tell. I don't know why I told you. Only five orders going out today. Only two of them are non-boat parts, but it's around $500 in, in merchandise. So that's great. Less items, more money is gonna be always the better way to go, um, unless those items are very large, which I did recently on Marketplace buy a tree stand. It's a rotating tree stand. Like you put your tree Christmas tree in it and it spins your tree around, which then how do you plug your lights in? I whatever. I don't know. I paid 20 bucks for it. I'll get, I think like 70 ish plus shipping, 60 plus shipping. It's huge. I underestimated when I said, Hey, I'll, you know, buy this off you. I underestimated how big it is. I regret the purchase. Every time I buy a big item, I regret it. There's never a time where I'm like, yay, I'm glad I bought this super huge thing that's gonna be difficult to pack and difficult to ship. I'm gonna get complaints from potential buyers that the shipping is expensive. Every time I regret it. So maybe I will just put it back on Marketplace for 50 bucks and hope I can unload it that way. That actually seems like a good idea. Because there's so few orders, I'll just go ahead and pull them all. First thing going out, B3D17 is a pin. I'm leaving stuff around. What am I doing over here? Making a mess. And it is a Spanish club pin, if you can see that. For that pin, I got 1039 free shipping. Cost of goods, less than a dollar. Next up, B3C is a set of Onita spoons. These ones right here. And this is one of those items. This has been a regular topic the last couple videos. Um, this is an item where I listed it and then I had someone reach out with a ton of extra information. This type of spoon, where it is, it looks kind of like a soup spoon, but it's almost, the spoon part is almost like a bowl, and then they're little. 
These are known as either cream or bouillon spoons. Very good to know. I think those were listed $50 free shipping. I had a sale going. I had someone send me a message saying something like I manipulated the price, like my offer was different than... Sometimes it just happens where like I'll run a sale and the sale end and I sent out an offer and you'll get multiple options to buy it and one will be cheaper than the other. And I don't mean to sound rude, but I always say, well, I would go with the cheap one. <laughs> like if it's on sale cheaper than the offer I sent you, then take the sale price. There's not like a nice way to really put that without putting a lot of detail. So it's one of those things that just happens. And it, I run a lot of sales and send a lot of offers. So it actually happens quite often. I got 32 free shipping, but the person who also said all that stuff then sent me a message saying, I won't go any higher than $25. And so they sent me an offer and they, then they also sent me offer $25. I just declined because if you're telling, if you're dictating, I won't go higher than this price, then that's what you're saying. And I'm going to take you at that face value and just decline your offer because that is a low ball offer and I want nothing to do with it. Then they eventually came back, sent me a different offer because that was the lowest they were going to go. I still countered, got $32 free shipping. Cost of good on the goods on those, less than a dollar. Next up, it's a repeat buyer F. 2E. And I guess mostly just to show off the organizational system I've been using for anybody who hasn't caught any of the boat part stuff. F, shelf, this is section F, shelf 2, and I go from the bottom up because I made that mistake over here and now I have to do it until I die and I hate it. When I switched to the metal shelves, I was taking stuff off of this shelf and putting it on this shelf and so everything got flipped around and now for the end of time, they are numbered from bottom up, and I hate it every single time. So F, shelf two, box E, and these boxes came with the boat parts by, and they are invaluable. I mean, these are probably, I don't know, a couple bucks a piece, and I got, I don't know, however many that is, and then all of those up there, and over there, and then I also have some more upstairs. I made out just in boxes on that deal. All right, and for this whoozy what's it right here, 6674 free, no, sorry, including shipping. That's just old habit right there. I'm not sure yet. I'm figuring out when I get back to listing patterns, which should have been three days ago, but it's looking like, I don't know, spring break's coming up too. <sighs> Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Hopefully, hopefully soon. I don't know if I'm going to do free shipping on anything anymore. I'm still feeling that out. I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll let you know when I know. Um, but speaking of repeat buyers on the boat parts, I had something happen yesterday. I had this item returned because it said the address was not an address or not like not the correct number or something like that. So I preemptively, so that I would know like when I messaged the buyer, was it the post office just not wanting to walk to a second door or whatever it was. So I Google searched the address. It is a place. It's a boat mechanic warehouse. Like it's a big, big, it's in California. It was, it's a big facility and they, it's just boats. Oh, the parking lot was just full of boats and boat repair stuff. And so I messaged him said, Hey, your address on file, your package got kicked back to me. It was, you know, $50 plus shipping purchase price. So it got kicked. I said, Hey, it got kicked back to me. Do you got an address that works? I was kind of taking a, just a, I don't know. I had a feeling one. I didn't want to go through the whole pain of like, okay, well, I'll refund you the money. I'll relist it, then purchase it again, da, 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 da. For the, it's, it's ground advantage. It weighs nothing. It's going to cost me $4. So just for the hassle, I like really didn't want to do that. But then also because I knew it was like a mechanics place, I was like, well, let me build a rapport here a little bit. So I said, Hey, shoot me the address. I won't even charge you. I'll just eat the shipping cost and I'll just ship it out. I'm not saying to do that. What could happen is they could get it and then say I never sent it, and then eBay is going to take their side. That's just how that would go. Even if I was in the right and I could prove it, it would take too long, and I wouldn't mess with it because my time is more expensive than what I would recoup every single time. Dealing with eBay is never an option anymore. I don't do it as far as like their customer service or their seller service. And they they were very thankful. And then they said, I will pass your name, my store name around to the other mechanics in the facility. So I think what it is, is it is a modular, like, hey, this mechanic works in this section, this mechanic works in this section. And he said, I'll pass around and have all the other guys look at your store and see if they can find anything. Will that result in sales? I don't know. Was it worth the shot? I think so. I think it worked out. I think my, my tingles, my feelings 
were right in that moment. But if I'd went the other way, would I have thought that was a bad idea? No. So let me know. Do you think, you know, taking a shot and something like that and once in a while is a good idea? A lot of these things you do in sales, you don't have any way to calculate if it's actually helping. Who knows on that one? Well, I mean, I'll know if a bunch of people in the exact same town start ordering stuff but maybe. I do actually have another order going out to California today, so maybe that was from somebody in that garage. But next up, F5B. It is a trigger assembly. I can read, so I know what that one is. Do I know what that does? No. Do I need to? No. Do I need to know that it was $239.99 plus shipping? Uh, yes. Yes, I do need to know that for this for this this <laughs> it's just wild i just i keep saying it but it's wild something i did look at today the trajectory of my sales for this year put me at doubling my sales from last year but i don't have enough dollars of inventory in my store to cover that projection. So what that tells me, because admittedly, the boat part's going so well, I have gotten a little more lackadaisical than I like listing. I haven't stopped listing, I'm just not hammering it like I normally do, and I'm aware of it and I'm going to fix that. I shouldn't have to wait till things are going bad to work harder when things are going good capitalize on that and use the momentum and work harder. But I don't have enough dollars in my store to keep the current projection going. So that was kind of eye-opening, like, okay, Drew, get to work. That's what I'm going to do, which I shouldn't have to remind myself, but when you work by yourself, there's nobody over your shoulder, sometimes you got to kick your own butt. And next up, F5B. Wait, that's the box I just had. <laughs> this is an expensive box. So this box right here had enough dollars in it to pay for the entire boat part lot that I purchased. This little box, and there's been many times over of that. So this one right here, Pulsar. How sci-fi sounding of it, a Pulsar. Um, and that dingle dongle who's he what's it right there, I accepted an offer of $120 plus shipping. It was listed for like 145, but I, I kept countering them and they wouldn't go any higher. And because my cost of goods is less than a dollar on every single part, I'm not going to spit in the face of $120. Because like I said last video, I take that money and I turn that money into more money. I can't turn stuff into more stuff. I have to sell the thing, get the money, then turn that money into more stuff, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. And they also are a repeat buyer. They probably have gotten a deal on something else and knew that I'm a bit negotiable. So let me go ahead and throw it to Friday shipping day, Drew. Future Drew here back for Friday shipping day. Only eight orders going out today and they're all fairly low dollar. And this is a result of my own doing. I mentioned, I think earlier in this video, been a whole week of video, so I don't know what I say earlier in the video until I edit. It's because things were going so well that I became complacent. Do not do that. I've said a hundred times when things are going good, use that motivation to continue the train. I could blame things, life, is hectic, all that kind of stuff. But when it comes down to it, it's my fault. Things aren't going to zero. Just I know myself and I haven't been putting in the work I should be putting in and I'm not gonna make excuse for it. What I'm gonna do is fix the problem. And so let's go ahead and pull the orders for today. I did have a weird thing. Let me know if this happened to anybody else. I got a message on eBay. I went to message the customer back, which the question was, is this item new? The items listed as new. Yes, 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 yes. Those messages make me nervous because it's like you're baiting me into answering a question so that you can come back and like get me later. I don't know, but it's as per the listing. Yes, the item is new. I went to message them back and in app, it said like the, the app was doing an update or something. And I couldn't message them back, which if that's true and they were doing an update at it was like noon on a Friday, that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. Why would you do an update at noon instead of at like three in the morning? I don't know. But the weird thing, not that eBay would do an update at a bad time, is that two other, other things I use. One's called TradingView. It's where I can like track stocks and crypto and stuff like that. That also was like buggy and doing an update. 
and then something else. I don't know what the third thing was, but three things today. We're doing an update, an update in the middle of the day, like at the same time, and they are not connected in any way. So I was like, that just seems fishy. I don't know. I don't want to put in my tinfoil hat, but it just seemed very weird that three things that I use at the same time in an inconvenient time, like to not be able to use TradingView, which is used by big money movers, big finance companies and uh, hedge funds and stuff. It's not a, like a little thing that I use. It's a big company for them to do a update in the middle of a trading day on a Friday. It just seemed weird. Only a couple boat parts today, but I am going to pull them because I had a request from friends of the channel in Brazil, which it's so cool that people watch me from all over the world. I live in a very small town of like 5,000 people. I don't want to say in the middle of nowhere, but you know, it's a very tiny town and I have people that from all over the globe watch me do what I do. And I think that's so cool. And they like when I pull the dingles and the dangles and the who's what's it's. So I'll throw those in today. So the first thing going out is F for C. Hello, Blackbeard. You getting comfy? Huh? Getting comfy? I do have a couple of TCG player orders to go out today, or that I should be going out today, but I don't have any stamps, so I can't do that. Now this one, I don't even have to make up a name for it. It's called a face seal. That's funny enough on its own. Sounds like a different name for makeup. Seal that face up. But for this thingamajig right here, which I know what a seal is, sure. <laughs> $9.99 plus shipping for, again, nothingness. Next up, weird item sold three times. It just seems like there's nothing about the items that that happens to. It just happens where you'll just have a random item that will sell, return, sell, return. I don't know. And it is Star Wars Jedi Knights and Star Wars Academy. As you will see, it's still in the bubble wrap from the last time it went out. <laughs> because why take it off? I, of course, had to take the packaging off because it had a label on it and I had to cut it open. For that, on sale, $14.39 plus shipping. That's weird. I've never listed a game plus shipping ever. So, huh. I don't know. That's cool. I, I like that. That's better than $14.39 free shipping. Next up, F3F. <laughs> These ones are just... The real names of these ones are funny today. An elbow breather. That sounds like an insult. That sounds like a like a grade school playground insult. You elbow breather. But for that elbow breather, 325 plus shipping. Um, because I am down to the boat parts being done for 99.9% .9 of it. I still got to do like the bulk lot type stuff. And I want to move on to the patterns just because that's going to be, I've said before, easy to do. But I've been staring at this Mikhail mystery box since December. And it is March like 20, I don't know, 21st, 22nd, 22nd. So that's been around for quite a while. So actually next video, I'm going to bust open that Mikhail mystery box and do a unbox a Mikhail mystery box unboxing, which there's enough new people to the channel that Mikhail mystery boxes, you'll hear me mention them every once in a while, and that usually the cost of goods is less than a dollar. It's product that I get from my friend Mikhail, who does now have a reselling channel and who has eclipsed me in six months of having a channel. He does a lot of like the, the shorts and the like tiktok -y type edited videos, so I think that's lent itself to him getting quick growth. He also does mostly haul videos and those do better than what sold videos. I'm very happy for him. His channel is called Resale Mania. I will put it up on the screen, but it's stuff that because the area he lives in, he gets so much stuff that he'll never get to. And instead of donating it back to a Goodwill or a thrift shop, he sends it to me at the cost of shipping. And so that's why it's always cost of goods less than a dollar because there'll be a hundred items in the box and it'll cost $40 to ship it. Something like that. That's around how it happens. Every once in a while, there's some really good stuff. There's some stuff that ends up in the trash. There's stuff that ends up in my garage sale. There's a whole mix. There's been over hundred dollar items in the boxes. There's been $4.99 items that just aren't worth selling. It's a good way for him to clear out his stuff. And it's a great way for me to get cheap inventory during the seasons when it's hard to get inventory in my area. I got a mustache hair, not cooperating and trying to trying to live in my mouth. So yeah, next video will be a Mikhail mystery box unboxing. And also I am one subscriber away from the next giveaway. So I guarantee that video will also have a subscriber giveaway. It probably should end up in this video, but I don't want to say it and then not be able to do it. Uh, next up, C2 is a OGO 
bag, this blue one, and this is a new in package, OGO, like a laptop bag, and this is a Mikhail mystery box item. So, you know, it's not junk that he sells me, sends me, even though sometimes there is junk in there, but it's a overall net gain for me by a long shot. For that right there, $18.39 plus shipping, cost of goods, less than a dollar. I've been complaining that I don't have any books to list. I had three sitting upstairs that I was just, I don't know, not getting to because they were all antique books. And so, you know, you can't just scan a barcode. You got to look them up. Sometimes you got to go to via Libre to get information because the history, search history doesn't go back far enough on Terra Peak, which with antique books, Sometimes you need that long distance sales history to know if anybody anywhere ever would want the book and you might have the one. One of them, worthless. One of them, $24.99 free shipping. One of them, $50 free shipping. So I had $75 in books sitting next to my desk for months. Next up, B3D14. And this container has been getting emptied lately. And obviously it's not empty, but just, I've been pulling it out more often than had been happening. Probably because I've been running sales. This little guardian angel lapel pin. And for that, $7.99 free shipping. I got that in a big lot of jewelry at some point, but cost of goods, less than a dollar. Which you'll notice is a running theme because I am a value buyer and not because I don't have money to spend up on something. Not because I wouldn't rather buy hundred dollar items that I sell for five hundred dollars I would much rather do that because you get the things you can get if you want to dictate the type of store you have you are placing a cap on the success you can have you need to let what your area dictates dictate your store so if you live in an area where like if you live in an area with bins like a good like goodwill bins like multiple of them selling clothes and books is a great idea because you can get them continuously consistently for cheap 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 for me that's my goodwill and salvation army those are more of like a hey i got some spare time why not maybe i'll find a pair of shoes it's never a i'm gonna go in and be able to fill up a cart that's not a thing i can't do that it's not available to me what i try to do is buy bulk for very little money so that my profits are 10x plus. So even though this is a $7.99 item, I probably have 10 cents into the item. So 10, if I could turn 10 cents into $4 in profit, so 10 cents into $4, which is what, 4,000x, 4, 4, 400x, 4,000x? You do the math. If I can do that over and over again, that's a successful business. Do I want to sell? $7.99 items, but when I buy the whole bag of jewelry, and some of them are 50, some of them are 20, some are $7.99, in totality, that's profits. That's how you have to look at it. It's the money flow in, money flow out. That's why in last video I was talking about cut your losses. Doesn't matter that's a loss. It's a learning lesson. Don't buy that thing again. You just cut the losses, the money flow in, money flow out. It's all about the flow. It's not about the individual items. It's a totality. That's how running a business works. Next up, E1, which I can't believe I pulled two items from this, this location in the same week. E1 is a pair of American Eagle jeans. I'm glad I don't have to go to this location often because it's inconvenient. E1, American Eagle jeans, and these are, were mine. Those are a pair of jeans I bought when I was, I don't know, probably in high school, <laughs> like, like 20 plus years ago, 20 years ago. Wait, how old am I? 20 years ago, but I didn't like the fit. So they, they, that's the thing with my clothes. Like the clothes I like, I wear them out because I wear them often. Like this shirt, this this zip up right here, this ugly brown zip up. I got this in eighth grade, eighth grade, but I hate it. So I never wore it. And so now I'm like, oh, well, it's the it's one of the ones I have. Cause that's how I, I'm not that person that's gonna buy clothes. And then like, I'm like oh, I don't really like it. Like that's the clothes I have. I, clothes to me is, silly expenditure so i just don't spend money on it until i have to and so now i'm stuck wearing this zip up that i hate so 15 dollars free shipping for those i made these free shipping because worst case scenario which it probably won't be it'll probably still be ground advantage but worst case scenario this ends up in a flat rate padded envelope and so i know the cost of shipping and i can make sure that's covered in the price but cost of goods zero because if you already own something you did not pay for it that's 
it was from yours that that money was already gone so cost of goods zero next up b3b is an htc amaze cell phone and case and this is another one of those times where i'm sure they had a reason and the reason was probably logical to them but they asked if this is the phone they were going to get yes yes the phone in the listing is the one you're going to get i don't know it's not a multi-quantity item maybe they've done that before where they ordered a phone and i again their reason was probably logical i was like okay sure yes I just wrote a yes because my brain couldn't wrap around like what well no i'm gonna send you a different one 9.59 free shipping on that maybe in my kyle mystery box but either that or it was free i would never pay money for something like this even though there are old cell phones so bolo but i don't i'm not gonna put the information in this video but just go and and do a cell phone search separate it you know like by brand so don't look up iPhones, take those out and look up the other ones or maybe put in vintage. Some of them you can get really good money for. I don't know if people collect them or whatever. Same thing with like old iPods. You can get decent money for those. I don't think people get them to use them. I think they get them because they have like all of the iPod generations like as a collection, that kind of thing. And they're not common to come across anymore. So $9.59 free shipping if I didn't say. And then last thing going out, order just came in, F2E. All right, another who's he, what's it? Couple of nothingness right there. $3.24 plus shipping, cost of goods, so less than a dollar. I wish I would have kept track of how many total bo boat parts I ended up listing because then I could have calculated exactly the cost of goods. My rough estimate was somewhere around like 34 cents or something. Like it doesn't even make sense to me. Makes sense. <laughs> you know, because some of those items were, what was it? The most expensive one was like 500 bucks or something. Like, come on, get real. Those type of buys don't don't come up. Don't plan on one of those happening. I don't think I will ever get a, a buy that, that this lucrative ever again. That was my one. It's back to the grind. That's why I, I got to kick myself in the butt and get back into grind mode because I fell upon an easy life for three months. So it's time for a little butt kicking to myself and time to get back to you know doing the hard work way in the future drew here when i was editing the video i realized i hadn't totaled up the boat part profits but that's great because that gives me a chance to say i hope you have enjoyed your spring break are enjoying your spring break and that you have a very happy easter i did take because kids are currently on spring break. I, I didn't film this week. So this boat part profits also includes some of the days not included in this video, but it's still all good no matter what. Previous total, 7,086 and 31 cents. New grand total, $8,153.39. Happy Easter, everybody. Well, that's gonna be all for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give a thumbs up. If you didn't, go ahead and give a thumbs down. Subscribe, share, and be good to each other. Just really neat. Hey, hey, hey. Do they do they ever you know, really fix things? I have no idea what this is. What do I care? this.